I always wait a few seconds so I can see that the video is running properly. So I want to talk about uh, sexual double standards um, or gender double standards in society. Um, just come across a video. I hadn't intended to make this video, but it's an interesting uh, discussion point. Um, and basically the video is from a guy called Joey Salad. Uh, I don't know if that's his real name or just like a stage name or something. But uh, I've actually, it's the second video I've seen from him in the tw last 24 hours. And this video is a sort of social experiment. Um, in the video, it's in a mall somewhere in the US, I don't know where. But it basically shows him and um, a very attractive young woman. Um, and the, the concept of the video is about double standards regarding sexual harassment. So in the first segment of the video, um, she's following him around and really coming on strong, like, oh, come on, want to do this, do that. And he's like, no, no, I don't want to, leave me alone, so on. And the reaction from people, as you would probably expect, uh, women are laughing about it and uh, saying, get some and stuff. One guy actually walks past and says, what's wrong with you, bro? She's hot and so on. And she is a very attractive woman, no question about that. But that's beside the point. Um, now, when it's reversed, surprise, surprise, um, people are immediately quite uh, hostile to the guy. Like he implies, like he's coming on to her. Uh, immediately, women physically confront him, uh, like push him back and say, "You can't do that to a woman," and so on. Uh, there's a guy squaring up to him, not exactly squaring up to him, but you know, looking like he's about to. Um, so clearly, it's a very different approach. Now. Some people that have watched this video, I actually found it via Women Against Feminism. So this wasn't from a masculine site at all. This is via Women Against Feminism. Um, and they were talking about the double standards. Now, some people said there was a difference in how they were acting. I.e. the woman was actually a better actor because she gave the impression that she was genuinely uncomfortable. Whereas when he was doing it, he was not really given the impression that he was that bothered. And he was sort of, um, I don't know about that. I think that's an excuse. I think probably her acting was a bit better. She was more convincing in the role. But I think even had he acted a bit more, if he sort of acted really uncomfortable and um, said like something like, I'm a married man, leave me alone, something like that, I think it still would have, um, I think it still, people would still have had a different reaction. This has been proven time and time again in, these sort of social experiments. I do think these sort of social experiments are useful and they can play a role in generating discussion about these double standards. Um, there was another similar video with a woman hitting a man in public and vice versa. Now, to be clear, I I think that coming on to someone that doesn't want it is wrong either way. Um, you know, if I like a woman and I, I approach her, if she says no, I totally respect that, I walk away. Um, I would never kind of push it because I wouldn't want to make her uncomfortable. I've also been in a situation where I, I have once or twice in my life had very pushy women. And speaking honestly, it didn't scare me, but it did make me very uncomfortable. Um, and it's not, you know, it's not a pleasant experience. Now, some people will say men are physically stronger, so a woman will always face a greater threat. but Surely the issue still stands if it is wrong for a man to do it, it's wrong for a woman to do it. Physical power is biology, but that's got no connection to morality, really, um, because the intention is still there. The intention of a woman in this situation is still to force herself onto a man that doesn't want it. I was also reading recently about the Joyce McKinney case. Uh, if you're not familiar with this, in the late 60s, an American woman, um, traced down a Mormon missionary. The crime actually happened in the UK. It was quite a well-known case. She tied the guy up and forced herself onto him, um, essentially raped him in everything, um, you know, in everything but name because there's still debate over whether a man can be raped or not. Personally, I think he can. I think if anyone is being forced to have sex against her will, that is rape. Um, to this day, she... She still has a very arrogant attitude about it. She still refuses to acknowledge that what she done to him was rape. And um, yeah, she's still in denial about it. 
she skipped bail and she went back to the states. So I, I don't know, I don't know the case that well, but that's the that's the gist of it. Uh, and this was an obsession she had with this young Mormon man. Um. So yeah, it these sort of social experiments are useful because they do demonstrate the um, double standards in society. It is impossible. It is possible. Um, it is important. Sorry, I should say it is important, though that they're done in the right way. Um, no, I think the setup was quite good, um, but you know maybe he should have acted a bit more. But I still think the same situation would have applied. There's other social experiments that don't leave that leave out the whole picture, like that. You know, walking in New York City as a woman for twelve hours. Um, I think that was flawed because it was like a 15 minute video segment of walking through 12 hours in one of the world's biggest cities. Um, there was a few men cat calling her. Some of them were inappropriate. Some of them were simply saying hello, but I think it was misleading and kind of you know, castigated the entire male population of New York City. Um, so social experiments can be good, but they have to be done in the right way. Um, a final point, and it's it is related to this, but it's to demonstrate to any any feminists out there who might be dismissing me as a radical masculist. Um, I, I hold exactly the same standards of respect because there's a guy that currently wants to come to the UK calling himself V. Roosh. It's obviously not a real name, or at least that's the name he goes by. Very controversial figure. He calls himself an ultra-masculist. He holds so-called rape lessons. Um, there's already a very strong petition to have him banned under hate speech because of his extreme misogynist views. Um, certainly in Scotland, he's already been banned from speaking to us in Glasgow and Edinburgh. Um, he's American. I've heard different things about him, but I'm not going to comment too much because I don't know that much about him. But certainly he sounds like a pretty despicable person. Now, I'm a critic of feminism, but I'm also, that doesn't mean I endorse the likes of him. And I think this guy needs to be investigated if he's being an apologist for rape. So, you know, to be clear about all of this, I think actual harassment is wrong, whoever it's from. And I certainly think this guy, V. Roosh, needs to be investigated as a potential sex offender. Um, I mean, his platform is despicable. He's basically trying to encourage other men that rape is OK. He wants to legalise rape. And, you know, this is not a case of debating how we define rape. This is a guy who wants to legalise rape, full stop, i.e. he believes that men should be returned to the rightful place as kings. Now, as a man, I, I think this guy's a piece of shit, and I do think that we should block him, because he's dangerous. It's not about free expression, it's about actions. So, you know, I hold the same standards um, universally, but I, I would like to see feminist responses and feminist excuses to this social experiment. I'll try and put a link to the video if I can, um, but it should be easy enough to find. Uh, the guy is called Joe, Joe, uh, I've forgotten that, but it's like a stage name. Um, anyway, thanks for watching.